Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson. The great thing about lines of text on the web is that they are responsive by default. As soon as you run out of room in the inline direction, they will wrap to a new row and they'll cluster according to the text justification. The goal of the primitive that we're going to learn about in this lesson has that exact same goal. We want to lay out things in the inline direction with consistent space. And then when we run out of room, we want it to wrap to a new row and cluster according to the justification. So in this lesson, we're going to be building this widget. Now this widget is a list of links uh, with consistent space, and they're also vertically aligned. Now when they run out of room in the inline direction, we want them to wrap to a new row, and we want them to cluster according to the justification that we have set on the primitive. Okay, once again, let's just start off with our basic markup. And just like always, there's a link to this starter project in the notes below. So we're going to import react from react. And then we're also going to import this menu component from menu. And that's just over here. It's not really important how it's implemented, like just like everything. Um, that's not what we're focusing on, but you can go look at that if you want to. Basically, menu is just a wrapper that lets you pass in any children you want. And it all that appears next to a logo, as you'll see. And in fact, let's just copy and paste this whole thing. And you can see here, this menu is putting this little logo placeholder and puts the square box around it. But the part we're worried about is this section right here. It's these, these menu bar features. Now, so what we're, we need to do is we're going to introduce the first component here, the first um, primitive, the first parts of it. And that is the inline cluster. Uh, oops, we're going to go const inline cluster equals style dot div. And it's very important that you actually bring in, actually, let's put that down here. Import styled from styled components. get the right quote mark and because I know we're going to need this let's go ahead and do um, spacing I cannot type today spacing map from spacing map and we're going to go ahead and wrap this in an inline cluster. What's it say? Uh oh, right. It helps if we actually use this as a file and not as a dependency like React. So that's good. Now, the inline cluster deals with things that are inline in one direction. And as we learned back in the first module, the, dis the layout pattern that really works well in that kind of pattern is display flex. So that's what we're going to do. Here you go, display flex. And we're going to set this to wrap. What this will mean is if there's no room left for all the elements in a single line, it will wrap to the next line. And then we're going to set justify content to flex and <sighs> uh, 
and align items to center. Okay. So let me go over each one of these things. You can see it moved everything over there. Justify content lets you set the justification or or sometimes people would call it the horizontal alignment in the direction that flex box the flex direction set, which is row by default. So by setting flex end, we're saying move it all the way to the end. So this div is taking up this entire space, but we're going to have the these little spans go all the way to the end. The align items will align things in the opposite of the flex direction. So this is also called the cross axis. This is your main axis, which is your flex direction, and your cross axis. In this case, we're saying center. We want this to be centered vertically in that cross axis. So this gets us really, really close to what we need already. So we're really doing, we made major steps already. Now, we used to for a long time to get create that gutter effect in with Flexbox, we had to use this kind of complicated margin where we used to to set margin and all the properties then use an outer wrapper to have negative margin which caused a lot of problems and it was not easy to work with sometimes but now just like css grid we can set the gap and in this case I, i'm just doing one rem and we get that same exact gutter effect space in between items but not around the items really awesome and in fact you can see that we're already because of the flex wrap we're going to start getting that clustering effect that we needed and we have hard coded yes but we have already implemented all the features for the inline cluster so that's that's awesome just with just a few lines of code here we we've created our everything we need for the that uh, so obviously we're going to want to make this more customizable so let's start with the gap now up until this lesson we've done all of our logic with the the inline cluster with their gap we've just done it in line in this case i'm going to use a CSS property and I'm not really going to go into why in in depth here but it will become more apparent why we need to do that in the next lesson but we're just going to do do this for now just I'm gonna ask you to accept it in good faith why this is useful What this does now is we we're now taking we're we're setting using all that logic to set the gutter that we usually do, and we're setting it to the custom property that we're calling gutter, and then we're going to pull that value out using var gutter, and now we can uh, go ahead and. Add that to our inline cluster here. We can go gutter. And I like that large gutter. So we could we can not use the default. Even though this is the default, sometimes it's helpful just to specify it, just because it we're aware of what's happening. Now the other thing we need to do is we need these values right here to be configurable. And we're going to use two different props. We're going to use the a justify prop to set the justify content and the line prop to set the line items. Now what's really useful here is that the properties for both of these are the exact same. They're flex start, flex end, center. So let's go ahead and with the magic copy paste, let's create uh, a map here 
an object that if we use the word start, we'll get flex start. If we get end, we'll get flex end and center equals center. And then we're going to rewrite our inline cluster component to look like this. Once again, I'm using the power of copy and paste here. What this says here is look for the justify prop. And if we pass in one of these options, start and center, go ahead and use it. Otherwise, just assume it's start. And the same thing with align items. And then we can come over to the inline cluster and let's set that to justify end align center and there we go we still have everything we need all but now we have a fully configurable primitive that will do exactly what we we want for any other situation and that's it that's everything we need you can click on the the code sandbox link in the lesson to see the final code in action and this cluster in fact is great it's responsive by default it, it handles a lot of things that we need to when we're working with items in line but it doesn't handle all of the situations sometimes we need to make some of these items stretch out sometimes we don't want them to cluster what we want is similar to the columns and the split component that it would switch at a certain stage. And that is where the inline, as opposed to the inline cluster, the inline primitive comes in handy. And we're gonna learn how to do that in the next lesson. Well, that's it. Thank you for joining. Congratulations on completing this course. I hope you learned a lot. If you enjoyed this content, I have a full course over at Newline. You can check it out in the description below. It's going to teach you much more about how to make composable CSS that can complements the React component pattern, as well as much more of the layout primitives that we only just touched on here in this course. I want to thank you again. Check out the link in the description and subscribe to this channel to get more fun content from Newline.